Hello friends, today we had a very special episode with Mr. Manan Mora, who is Senior Vice President of Strategic and Business Operations at Liminal. Liminal is basically a company which provides incredibly simple and secured self-custody solutions to all the users, like regular users as well as institutes. We have picked this brain on a lot of topics like blockchain trilemma, how blockchains are trying to resolve it. And how different blockchains are actually have different approach. Ethereum started from security and, uh, security and decentralization moving towards scalability and uh, coins like Flow and uh, Solana or maybe other coins which are moving towards decentralization and they started from scalability and security. How different approaches can work in the same industry. Moving on, we have discussed many ethos of the company, not your keys and not your coins. And now it's like everybody agrees on this. If you don't hold private keys and it is not secured, then those coins are actually prone to hacks. They are single points of failures. And people need to realize this, that being a custodian is a power, but it comes with a big responsibility. Then we also discuss on the use cases. Like he realizes that if we need to reach 1 billion users in the cryptocurrencies, we need more use cases like gaming, NFTs, DeFi. And he also touched upon why payment cannot be a great uh, need base in India, especially because of UPI and also the RBI regulations. And, and finally, I think we have a great discussion on about regular users, like what are the difference between hot wallets and cold wallets and what are multi-signature multi -signature wallets and how it is different from MetaMask, which are single signature wallets. And also how the company goes out of its way to even ensure that your nominees can withdraw your funds, even if they don't have your private keys, because this is a big problem. Like there are a lot of coins that have been lost by early investors because if somebody died or something happened to them and nobody holds their private keys, then that funds are not withdrawable. And why it is important for something like a uh, long-term coins like Bitcoin or Ethereum, if somebody is holding them, you must have a nominee and you must place it with people uh, with whom it, it is secured. When several people in the past have lost their points also because they were there's no nominees. No nominees. And also then we finally discuss upon the tie-ups that uh, Liminal is up to. Like they have a lot of DeFi tie-ups and uh, tie-ups with a lot of uh, Web3 companies, which is important because if you're holding your currencies there, it might be put to good use. Like even like staking on Polygon or some DeFi, uh, I think he said with Uniswap, right? Like yeah. we are, they have integrations with Uniswap so that you can swap your coins and also participate in farming or in DeFi activities. So it is a really fun discussion. And thanks again, Manan, for doing this. Uh, so here is the entire discussion for you. And we'll also make a detailed video on Liminal products and services so that you know that how can you use them, how, how it benefits you. So here is the interview. Enjoy watching it. Hi, Aditi. Hi Manan. Hi Manan, this is Nikhil. Hi Nikhil, how are you guys doing? We are doing very good. Welcome to Friends Allco Manan, thanks for joining in. Pleasure is all mine, pleasure is all mine. Right. Where are you guys based out of? Delhi. Okay, uh, I'm hearing a lot of like scary things about Delhi pollution now, so hope you guys are safe. Yeah, yeah, we are safe till the time we are at home. <laughs> 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 wow. This is a recurring problem. No, every year this is a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people are thinking at least now with them them controlling like both states, it should probably get better. But yeah. looks like the situation is still the same. Yeah, yeah, the pressure is still the same, and uh, th this thing will not go very soon. No, and it comes from Haryana also, not only Punjab. Right? It comes from Haryana as well. Right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's a bigger problem to solve. It's a bigger problem to solve. You are based out of Mumbai, right? Yes, born and brought up in Bombay. Oh. But we keep coming to Delhi uh, for work, of course. Uh, but yeah, I think the last time I was there was last month. That time, honestly, I found it like really like not a problem at all. I thought like all of this was a big hype and all. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a particular month or a whatever. When yeah, it, it just started around a week ago. So the air quality ah. is getting deteriorated just a week ago. Uh, but now it will go on for like a month or two. It is January. Yeah, like. I was I was staying near that Lodi Gardens and all of that uh, mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and uh, I was very impressed with like the open green spaces and all of that. So Bombay doesn't have any of it, right? So yeah. <laughs> I came back and I was like, we live like a very uh, shabby lifestyle out here in Bombay. Like if you're in Delhi, like and 
all those households uh, in the garden with you know having their own picnic and chilling and i was like uh, in bombay this is a dream you can't do that so i was actually <laughs> Really jealous of that uh, till last week. Then I was like, okay, but maybe but now, Bombay is not. Now you have got the compensation <laughs> for it. Is <laughs> right. Yeah. How's how's uh, everything else going on? Yeah, everything else going on very 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 well. And uh, uh, exploring this the crypto industry every day. So we we started this in Solko like four years ago. Uh, okay. So uh, she's uh, Aditi is chartered accountant, and uh, I did my. Engineering from Bits Planning, then MBA from FMS Delhi, and I was working wow. with Airtel for a couple of years, for about three years in B two B space. But ever since we uh, learned about crypto, we just got hooked, like <laughs> investing into it, trading into it, getting friends and family into it, and making some NFT projects for school. So, that, <laughs> so that's the, that's the risky part. Getting friends and family into it is the risky part. Yeah, so yeah bull yeah, market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bull I, market is the hero. The good part is when they went, they when they entered, we were in a bull. So they they enjoyed all the DeFi summer. They enjoyed all those NFT booms. And okay, after that, <laughs> they 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 are resistant now, right? Now they can take it. Yeah, so it's crazy, right? Uh, yeah. Generally, when you are in like a bull, uh, and there is like so, we were talking to a friend, right? So he shared a very interesting anecdote. So he's like uh, last two last year Diwali. Uh, Yeah, you know, friends and family. When you gather and everything, uh, yeah. everyone wanted to like you know ask me like where can I buy Bitcoin, where can I buy Bitcoin, and all of that <laughs> because your probably every family has one or two people in crypto, right? Yeah. So, so he goes like this Diwali. Everyone came to me and like, are you all right? Hope things are all right with you. <laughs> do you do, do you have a do you have a safe job? Everything's fine. So like you know. You can clearly see the shift in the narrative now. So yeah, it's crazy. And, and it's what... exactly Diwali to Diwali. Like no, November no. was the bust time, right? November the big fall started right from sixty-eight k, and we are That's at eighteen k. <laughs> That's true. So and which is a part of the problem that we are trying to solve in the industry, right? Is that. Uh, Uh, a lot of these users come in only for speculative reasons, and yeah. uh, so which is why you see a spurt of users coming in during the bull, mm. and uh, as soon as there is a bear, they will all go away. And this is a, I think, problem that the industry is trying to solve since quite some time. Mm. The root cause of this eventually goes down to the fact that you don't really have a lot of use cases uh, for adoption. Mm. So. so till you don't till till crypto uh, you know has more use cases outside of just speculation and and making a quick buck you will continue seeing this trend because uh say for example there is no other reason for you to buy dogecoin right now apart from the fact that elon has probably bought twitter and the 8 dollar mm-hmm. blue tick mark might be paid mm-hmm. from doge right mm-hmm. again that's a lot of speculation mm-hmm. because now if i have doge there is literally nothing i do with it Mm-hmm. So till you do not have adoption, you will keep seeing this behavior again and again and again and again, and probably there will be a bull sometime next year, mm-hmm. next to next year. It's it's mm-hmm. it's due, mm-hmm. but a, a, and all of that will change, and that's what we like. We keep seeing in that in the industry also, like when we were at Zepay also, mm-hmm. like your user adoption or your volumes like go through the roof. Like you know, you have like literally you have to hire like consultants, external third parties to sort mm-hmm. of. manage those volumes hmm. and as soon as a bear comes in the volumes like like the users are gone so those are like the the speculative people who come in there and i don't blame them till hmm. as as web3 uh, till you don't get a lot of more adoption real use cases hmm. you can't you can't expect people to think beyond speculation they are going to only treat crypto for that right so that is what uh, a lot of good people in the industry who you know we like uh, now probably you will be well versed with all of the crypto terminology the biddlers the mm. the people who really focus on like growing the ecosystem that's mm. what they're focusing on now like all all of the energy is going towards how you can bring in real use cases mm. polygon is a very good example of that mm. they've been they've been doing some phenomenal work in the industry right so uh, uh, yesterday we were seeing like a pos machine Uh, a demo from Polygon of how you can, you know, use uh, your Polygon and spend it 
at restaurants uh, using a POS machine and a card and like just swipe it and there'll be a real on-chain transaction happening. Oh, wow. Nice, nice, nice. So, so till you, I mean, that's one payment is a big use case for crypto, but I think India pr- probably will not see a lot of payment use cases because of a strict stance taken by RBI on that front, right? Mm-hmm. So, and which is right, wrong, we can keep debating, but I think that is one uh, use case. Uh, payment use case is something that I don't think we'll see a lot in India. Hmm. Uh, my bet is uh, probably, you know, stuff like gaming. Gaming, I think, is probably the biggest use case for crypto right now. So uh, uh, there is this All India Gaming Federation or something or some some... I'm forgetting the name of the federation, but uh, it has like huge uh, amount of participation. Like I think in one in three new crypto startups are now focusing on gaming, but there's a very clear use case, right? Mm-hmm. If you were a if you were a say a gamer, maybe 20 years back, mm-hmm. right? In your college, maybe you played like excellent uh, World of Warcraft or whatever, mm-hmm. and you collected like whatever. Then life happened, you moved on, you quit playing games and you were in a nine to five job and all of that. Right. So, so that just becomes a conversation that you probably have with friends or like, you know, those used to be Mm. days when you used to Mm -hmm. play all of that. Right. Now that because of crypto, NFT, blockchain, you can just tokenize all of that and say, you no longer need it, but say there are only 10 swords in a game. Mm -hmm. Uh, And because there are only 10 and they allow you to do X things in the game. So the generation that is playing it right now would, you know, die to have one of those swords. Yeah, yeah, they can just rent it out from India. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so that that is what is missing for other use cases for now, at least. Like, I probably with UPI, with uh, now credit cards also being added to UPI. Uh, at least Indians don't really, really like. At least people that I speak to are from mm. not the crypto industry. Mm. Do not see the need. Hmm. for uh, payment use cases for crypto in local transactions hmm. so they are like more than happy and satisfied with upi uh, hmm. and and they really question that and i a lot of times do not have a lot of answers to debate around that right because hmm. uh, frankly it works fine hmm. so uh, and and honestly there is also this debate right if there were a lot of payment use cases are you really going to use your crypto to spend it? Exactly, so, exactly, exactly. That's that's what I wanted to ask. So if you're really bullish on something, if you're bullish on a token, either Ethereum, Bitcoin or a Polygon or Matic token or something, are you really going to spend Matic tokens to have a meal or something? Exactly. So that is what a lot of crypto OGs did, right? Back in the day, right? From your Bitcoin pizza day to yeah. you will find a lot of OGs. Uh, who, so I've got a colleague from uh, uh, my workspace, right? Mm-hmm. One of the OGs from like 2013 or 12 or whatever uh, was the f- one of the first ones to get his hands on Ethereum and and back in 2014, 15 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Bought like uh, T-shirts for two Ethereum and all of that, right? So he goes like, you know, back back in the day, a of course no one knew this is going to like really uh, hit off so well, mm-hmm. and B was uh, that. As OGs, they felt the responsibility to sort of start these use cases mm. so that there is adoption and, you know, you can do something with it because literally back then, otherwise there was no speculation also. So what do you do with your ether that's lying there? Mm. So he's like, like this costs me now $2,800, right? The t-shirt. <laughs> and at one point it was probably 6,000, 7,000. Mm. <laughs> so, so now it is unthinkable for us to really spend it back in the day. It used to be like a dollar or whatever. So it, it used to be like, you know, a bargain that you got like from for, for something which is probably not going to have any future. Uh, mm. You're getting a t-shirt. So that's a good bargain back then. Mm. So, I mean, there used to be people who had like these uh, websites where you could just go and claim Bitcoin, right? Like just put yeah. in your address, claim it. And there used to be like people used to donate uh, Bitcoin like left, right and center. All of that is unthinkable now because of the, the sheer size of the industry now. So, mm-hmm. which is why now there are unique ways to try and like get more people into the adoption. But like, for example, if you uh, see Flow as a chain, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what they are consciously doing is that, see, you have to sacrifice something. So, there is always the trilemma that the industry keeps debating or blockchain mm-hmm. keeps debating. 
you no one has sort of achieved all three yeah. so either you sacrifice decentralization or speed or security right so uh, at least what flow is sort of doing now is that we'll be centralized but yeah. then we'll be at least be able to uh, cater to the web to crowd and get them into web3 hmm. and we are okay to start becoming decentralized slowly gradually over a period of we we'll keep adding more validators we'll hmm. keep decentralizing that network but that's not the ideal way to go right now so that's the stance that they have taken hmm. so that is allowing them to sort of get a lot of adoption from the web2 side because then you are able to control the whole experience uh, uh, really well and you are able to process transactions really well so uh, you cannot expect a bitcoin network to do a lot of things that flow can do mm. but then that comes at the cost of centralization and decentralization mm. so so everyone has their own way to do it but now everyone has just realized that we really really need to get out of this speculative mind zone and really find new use cases mm. so a lot of good work is being done by these incubators so mm. india also has a, a few of them which are doing phenomenal work including builders tribe uh, there is foundership there is reflexical so uh, you can think of them as like uh, at a very basic level like yc combinators for these crypto startups in india mm. but uh, they've been doing a phenomenal job in like mentoring these uh, young kids who are wanting to start their own web3 startups and uh, allowing them to think about how do you design your tokenomics mm. how do you you know uh, which chain do you deploy on mm. uh, how do you make sure uh, it's easier for users to start using your application mm. is your idea making sense uh, mm. some of them are great engineers they have no marketing uh, background mm. they provide them you know marketing support so they are uh, contributing a lot towards the growth of the sector mm. but honestly it all eventually also rolls back to regulation right so mm. uh, i mean you can do all of the good things in the world mm. and if you're going to pay like aditi will probably understand this uh, pain much better than anyone else but if you're going to charge 30% on a on a gain and not allow me to set off my losses, losses. you're not going to be able to convince a lot of web2 folks to come in here so mm. the guys who are see already in web3 are are going to be there and they're going to do everything that they do but we are still like we have to accept the fact that we're still like really like we are minute in the whole scheme of things we are mm. we are no less like we are a minority right mm. now the only way you expand the industry is that you go you do everything you can see think about it like if you are web2 right now you have everything on your fingertips you just open a application and you can start doing anything right mm -hmm. now replicate that experience on a web3 that one click is sort of uh, transitioned into like a eight click step you go you open metamask mm -hmm. you write down your seed phrase mm -hmm. and nine out of 10 people i know do not store their seed phrases correctly and they somehow they come from this web2 mindset that reset password we'll do something and we'll get it back hmm. till they actually lose it and they're not able to believe for the fact that, that this is gone forever and there is no person on this earth uh, they try and write and they try and write emails to metamask saying that you know do something hmm. and and for them the whole idea of the the fact that you know this is decentralized no one really has access to this except you is hmm. very difficult to fathom for them and i know hmm. so many of them who've lost a lot of their uh, you know crypto assets simply because uh, they thought that you okay, could it's i mean they're saying it but you can still like you know there has to be a way you will get your seed phrase back so the liminal kit concept is the liminal kit is not your keys not your coins it's written exactly the so i mean this was a uh, this was uh, a phrase coined by andreas antonopoulos back in the day Mm -hmm. and uh, we used to work very closely with andreas from our zeppe days okay. so we were very very fortunate to you know develop the product under his guidance and take his inputs on everything that we did uh, eventually when we started uh, so when when mahin who's the founder he started liminal and all of us uh, sort of joined him and started building so andreas uh, was there since day one right mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted and, and and that is something that is imbibed in us that if it's not your keys it's not your coins but 
uh, with that also comes a lot of responsibility like you know if if you exactly. not going to be responsible yeah. uh, enough to to store your or back up your seed phrases and and be diligent about it and 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 you know create a couple of copies keep it in different geographies exactly uh, exactly if you don't do all of that because uh, with like spider man says right like with power comes responsibility exactly so exactly yeah so so that i think we are still far away from self custody per se but mm-hmm. i don't blame uh, web2 users for it right so your so uh, convenience by the fact that your passwords can be easily available to you you can reset them that that convenience versus having metamask your funds your this eventually doing that is a lot to expect from a user like you can't expect adoption to come in if mm-hmm. you are sort of going to have such a complex process for onboarding for users and that is a problem that a lot of startups are now working on Hmm. uh to create uh wallets which are uh, catering to web2 users retail users who come into web3 hmm. and are not as complicated uh you can you know sort of all of the uh private key generation and all of that happens behind the hood there is something that a code or whatever which is your backup comes in you store it uh but all of it is like sort of as seamless as web2 so that is a that is wallet is a big area that a lot of people are you know trying to solve mm-hmm. uh, because uh, if you think about it like custody and wallet is the most fundamental layer right mm-hmm. if you screw that up you can never get adoption like if if in your mind uh, you are like you know you did everything right you got into crypto early you bought bitcoin at like say $1000 everything right and then eventually uh, you goofed up on the custody side and you lost your assets right yeah. that is what user lost forever you yeah. we can never get you back to web3 yeah so so till we don't sort the custody part of it any other use case is useless because till you don't have security and peace of mind that my funds are safe there is no reason why you would want to be in web3 you exactly. would you so yeah so I, who are for the ethos of cryptocurrency like who prefer decentralization and ownership like there are users who are just here for speculative purposes and they might right. not really bother to keep their keys private and they won't they don't want that headache but there are people who are here specifically for decentralization and the ownership of it and they they try to at least uh, uh, stick around and they try to keep their private keys safe and at least ha- try to have the best practices exactly exactly so so generally what we what we've recommended people is that you don't need to have the same approach for everything right mm-hmm. so say for example uh, aditi being uh, uh, you know the the visionary that she is and she realized that bitcoin is going to be the future she mm-hmm. bought it with the intention of something like gold right like uh, something like i will not use it for me mm-hmm. but i would want to pass it on to my future generations right mm-hmm. now that coin or whatever coins need to be treated very separately versus uh you realizing that okay elon musk has bought over twitter there could be a spike in doge let me just get my hands on doge right that is something that you've really really bought from a very short term speculative perspective mm-hmm. there is no reason for you to you know worry about decentralization c- controlling your own doge and all of that mm. it makes absolute sense for you to keep those funds on a centralized exchange mm. uh, w- because of the intention that you might be uh, getting rid of them maybe in a month maybe in a month uh, yeah. right so so but but your bitcoin that you've probably bought from a multi generation wealth generation point of view mm. it's stupid to keep it on an exchange so mm. we've already seen multiple instances in the past where uh, you know really reputed exchanges maybe uh, because of challenging times or whatever but if they end up like shutting down or whatever uh, the users eventually realize that you know uh, i came into web3 where i had the option this is the only industry where you have the option to control your own funds right there mm-hmm. is literally no other uh, industry where you can do it and you converted that also into a a new age bank right mm. and then you 
again have the same issues and plus because there are no regulations you don't really know at least with a bank maybe you get 1 lakh 2 lakh 5 lakh whatever the regulation mm-hmm. allows you to and you still have rbi making sure that uh, retail in, retail users are protected to some level or whatever mm-hmm. so no regulations plus you had your bitcoin you chose to be either lazy or not mindful or whatever and kept it there for convenience right there is no other reason you mm-hmm. do not want to take control of funds when you can mm-hmm. So at liminal, so, the option of this insurance also. So at liminal, the the currently the model that we do is slightly different. Uh, so we largely cater to B two B. So what we really uh, do is, uh, <coughs> say you're a user, you open an account with Zepay, and now you choose to keep your Bitcoin with Zepay, right? Mm. So now. you as the user are not controlling your private keys and you are relying on zeppe to do a proper job and keep your assets safe for you so in this example zeppe is acting as the custodian for you mm. in the typical uh, world uh, you can think of it like a cdsl or whatever where you've kept your dmat shares mm. in custody now zeppe has the responsibility of managing the infrastructure so zeppe has two options build or buy they can either build their own wallet infrastructure have their own team and do all of that or they could go to the market and see the, if there are companies who provide these mm-hmm. services and take a subscription from them and use their infra mm-hmm. so that is where liminal comes into the picture so we build wallet infrastructure that these businesses can use mm-hmm. uh, and uh, but again because we uh, completely believe in uh, you know controlling your own assets so say for example if zepay is using liminal Zepe will be controlling the keys, so mm. Liminal will be providing the uh, technology, the infrastructure on which Zepe can create wallets and store these funds, mm. and then we help them automate a lot of uh, money movement. So every Web three business has a very typical fund flow when it comes to like your digital assets, right? Yeah. So there are there are cold wallets, there are warm wallets, there are hot wallets, and there is movement happening across and. each wallet has its own use case uh, different members different sort of security risk and all of that so we help them automate uh, most of this stuff uh, to the extent possible and make their operations quite efficient and secure and compliant so those are like big three pillars that we really focus on we mm. want to make sure that number one you're secure mm. number two you're as efficient as possible so if you know i understand your business very well and i know that these funds have to travel like this then i make sure that that fund flow is as efficient as possible because every transfer you do there is also an element of network fee involved and uh, you don't want to keep a lot of funds in your hot wallet because by the nature of it those keys are online so mm-hmm. there is you know, those wallets are more susceptible to hacking or ri- those risks mm-hmm. so i need to keep a lot of my funds in cold or warm wallets and then from warm i need to keep monitoring my hot and keep refilling Easy. so and and so we automate all of this for them so that mm. when you're using sort of liminal you're as efficient as possible at least with respect to your wallet operations yeah. and the last is where we want to make sure that you're compliant with at least on the wallet side of things for whatever uh, you know compliance uh, a very basic example is that say we've integrated with trm labs which is a, a AML transaction monitoring tool. Mm-hmm. So, as Zepe, uh, say if a user uh, who's probably a hacker, right, and is bringing in some uh, dirty coins from uh, wherever he hacked to Zepe, mm-hmm. because he will have to bring it to some exchange, either uh, you know some centralized exchange if they want to eventually Sorry. convert that back to fiat and then take that money back to their bank account, right? Mm-hmm. So, say if this is a scenario, uh, liminals. infrastructure uh, scans all of these transactions against using trms databases mm-hmm. and if there is any issue with any deposit coming in liminal proactively like sends a notification to zepay's compliance team saying that boss this looks dirty just make sure you know you do your checks and then if you think this is fishy uh, block the deposit don't allow the user to get the deposit mm-hmm. and then based on your compliance policies you can take a call but your zepe does not need to have any integration of their own okay uh, by default if you're using liminal you get this like built in so even if you're a small family office or a small business 
uh, you are not going to really uh, have developers who will help you like set up all of this and integrate all of this right mm -hmm. but that does not mean that you do not have the liability of making sure that you are not dealing with dirty users right mm -hmm. or you are not dealing with dirty coins so to say mm -hmm. so that is where we come in we want to make sure that the custody layer of the industry is secure to make sure like that's the fundamental thing like mm -hmm. like i keep saying that you know till you are very comfortable that you are not going to lose your funds mm -hmm. you cannot expect to put in more money or get deeper into web3 so mm -hmm. i and i know a lot of crypto native people also mm -hmm. who have lost a lot of coins in the in their journey right mm -hmm. and a lot of them have decided to like stay away from crypto after that Mm -hmm. uh, a few of them have learned from their mistakes and mm -hmm. probably gotten better but till that problem is like 100% solved like you know you're you go to zero that today and you buy you know one reliance share you're not going to worry about ke okay, wo reliance share will get lost mm -hmm. right that, that that level of comfort has come to you because that is not even a thought that comes to you mm -hmm. that i have to worry about like my share should be fine mm -hmm. so that needs to that level of comfort needs to come on the custody side of things as well on web3 that mm -hmm. you know if i am buying i i am comfortable with what i am doing if i am buying like say two bitcoins and my objective is long term i know i can move it to like a self custody wallet mm -hmm. and in self custody also then there are journeys that people do right mm -hmm. the first step they take is maybe open a metamask account mm -hmm. and and properly you know transfer mm -hmm. say you have ethereum and you transfer it there mm -hmm. now Uh, these single sig wallets not only metamask any single sig wallet are a great first step for you to like start exploring your defi world mm. so you can choose to keep a, a limited amount of your coins there and you know do all of your defi activities mm. to get a hang of decentralization of how you manage your private key and all of that mm. then people take a step further because uh, these browser based or you know similar wallets have their uh, keys which are online Mm -hmm. so again there is a certain amount of risk mm -hmm. uh, where you might end up uh, revealing your uh, private key and giving access to your wallet mm -hmm. then uh, the the next layer in the journey is where people buy a hardware wallet like a trezor mm -hmm. or a ledger mm -hmm. they connect that to metamask and then they use it then you are sort of i would say 90 95% safe and secure mm -hmm. right because then your uh, what this hardware device is doing is it's not letting your private key getting leaked mm. outside mm. so it's taking the transaction in it is signing it offline and then it is only sending the signed transaction back to mm. the intermediary that you're dealing with mm. so all of the uh, risky stuff is happening outside of mm. the system now the only reason i don't say this is 100% secure is that this is still single sig now if you end up losing your seed phrase and if something happens to your private key mm. right there is nothing you can do about it mm. so the <clears throat> next layer in the journey to store your funds which is again at least your long term funds and a decent amount of whatever uh, wealth that you have there is your multi sig wallets mm. and and multi sig wallets you can of course think of them as your corporate joint bank accounts or whatever mm. Mm. so where where you know we say that any two out of three can sign mm. so you go to the cfo he will sign ceo he will sign and then the bank will pass it is very similar to that but this is we enforced at the blockchain level so mm. so you create like and you you can have like whatever configurations that you want mm. uh, an ideal configuration is where you also keep one redundancy so mm. meaning do not do a wallet where it is two of two signing Yeah, right. because again, then one time lost is uh, you creating that. Okay, so so we call it redundancy mm -hmm. uh, in our language, right? So mm -hmm. uh, keep redundancy so that if there is something that happens to one key, mm -hmm. there is a third key that can help you recover your funds. So two of three is generally considered to be really nice. Mm -hmm. But again, I mean, if it's a it's a treasury wallet and you have like say hundred bitcoins or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe you do four of seven, five of seven, mm -hmm. six of mm -hmm. eight, whatever. Mm -hmm. depending on the 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 use case of the wallet mm. and the risk of the wallet mm. and then make sure that these members are <laughs> different mm. so a lot of people do multi sig but then they control all three keys and then they insert one they sign they insert the second and they sign mm. 
and generally a, a big mistake that these crypto native people do is the fact that if something were to happen to you today forget web3 and crypto i mean people are not able to recover your normal assets and uh, we have this thing in our families to not tell our family members about all of this right mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, uh, crypto people do not uh, realize this but they do not end up sitting with their families and and show them you know where their digital assets are and yeah. how do you recover bitcoin and um, there is a study somewhere and i'm i may be wrong with my figures but it probably goes into billions of dollars worth of assets lost because people who were crypto native they just like died and their families don't in some cases don't even know of these mm-hmm. a- assets existing in a lot of cases they know that okay this guy had investments in crypto but that's about it i don't know where and what yeah so that is another problem that comes with self custody say you had an account with zeppe you could easily reach out to them they would have some procedure you give them a death certificate and blah 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 mm-hmm. you prove your the nominee and and still it's better maybe mm-hmm. you can get access to their funds mm-hmm. but again when you are managing your own funds and you have your own private keys there is no party that you can go to you can't go to metamask or you can't go to trezor and say that give me my funds it yeah. doesn't simply work that way yeah. so a lot of so that is a that, that that is also a problem that we are trying to solve at liminal with uh, you know uh, uh, our inheritance planning product so we are trying to enforce this at a blockchain level in a way that if you have a family account and you know if you have your bitcoins there mm-hmm. uh, you still control the keys mm-hmm. but if something were to happen to you uh, we will proactively reach out to your nominee get that verified and at a blockchain level allow them to or help them to transfer funds to their account mm-hmm. uh, at no point giving up control of your assets right oh. and so we worked with uh, nitin De- uh, uh, sorry nishit desai and associates uh, on this specific project to develop like a flow that mm-hmm. is legally operationally and technically sound okay. so so that's that that's a uh, problem for at least the family office side of customers who are like maybe say hnis have uh, 5 10 plus bitcoins if stored your if something were to happen so we keep sending them pings on their uh, uh, accounts and they have to sign a message using their private key to prove that they're alive and okay. uh, and if we don't receive answers to like maybe two or three pings pings uh, successively that's when we even we don't wait for the nominee to sort of reach out to us because in a lot of cases what we've seen is nominees don't even know that they are a nominee to this account right mm-hmm. so i go ahead and open an account and i just go ahead and say aditi is my nominee and i completely skip the fact that i have to tell aditi that you are a nominee in this account mm-hmm. so there is no way for aditi to know that there was a liminal account that manan had and you know mm-hmm. i am the nominee and i need to figure out mm-hmm. and then take these 10 steps so the way we've designed is that if manan were to not respond to those pings liminal proactively will go ahead and ping uh, aditi that you know what's happening to manan is he fine not fine not fine then we start the process okay so that's one way we are trying to at least solve the problem but mm-hmm. there are challenges with self custody right so there mm-hmm. are i won't like deny it uh, so in fact c4 is a non profit organization uh, uh, based out of canada mm-hmm. and uh, they came they, they've come up with uh, cc something known as ccss which mm-hmm. is basically uh, cryptocurrency security standards mm-hmm. so you can think of them as a complement to iso or another any other standard so mm-hmm. what they've done is they've laid down standards for every aspect of uh, wallet operations right so mm-hmm. how should you generate your private key mm-hmm. how should you back up your private key mm-hmm. where should you store your private key what should you do if something happens to one member in a wallet and their key gets compromised mm. so so on and so forth so the idea is that you don't need to rack your you know brains or whatever they have sort of made it like a checklist so you have that checklist in your liminal kit right when you send that yes, that's, you have your ccss that's ticket. correct yeah. so andreas was mm. uh, one of the original board members committee members behind ccss okay. so so that is how when we were designing our self custody platform uh we were sure from day one that we wanted to incorporate the ccss aspects here so we wanted to 
build the platform in a way that not only is liminal ccss certified or becomes certified at some point and compliant but by using liminal even the user should become ccss compliant yeah without knowing so when you create your account in liminal we ask you to like do a few check marks tick marks and send you all of these kits and checklists to make sure that you've done everything correctly mm. so that once you've done that you mm. can freely like use those wallets for 5 500 1000 bitcoin doesn't matter right mm-hmm. so as long as those things are done and then you practically practically become unhackable right yeah there is literally literally no way if you do all things correctly yeah that you ever lose access to your funds and and self custody is really important not only from like controlling your own funds but there are practical live examples of uh, this that we've seen right so for example uh, the war uh, when taliban took over afghanistan right afghanistan also of course had a lot of rich people hmm. now imagine they had to you know leave their houses and and become refugees overnight hmm. right hmm. and say now uh, say you are a rich guy in afghanistan today taliban's taken over you left afghanistan hmm. you're in turkey or whatever hmm. wherever hmm. and you start your life afresh maybe in a refugee camp Hmm. now think about it that if you had all of your wealth in maybe say bitcoin or whatever right like i'm not advocating any specific coin hmm. but say if you theoretically had the option to control your funds hmm. in a private key hmm. you had to escape your house you you know you took that it private means key means that you're like easily like you you have access to plug that in and and you're rich again yeah, so exactly the power of controlling your and, and we're seeing that with russia and ukraine now a lot of refugees there who had to like abandon their houses like overnight where where there is nothing you can do if your funds are if you have gold in your bank so be it you have to forget it so even this is in some I, countries like where inflation is very high right even there it exactly you control your own funds into currency that you believe in <laughs> so <laughs> people don't realize how big a problem inflation is in some countries right so we are not as indians able to relate to that man basically i was going through all the products that you have at liminal and i was like thoroughly impressed even for like the simple hni customers not even talking about the exchanges who have that uh, regular flow and automated uh, refill which you have done 450 million uh, by the way so that is like very exciting yes that's yeah. correct for for a regular user i was wondering like so there are very very like clear check marks right you can have two of three three of five and you can create n number of wallets you are platform agnostic which is a big thing because like we can have all the platforms in, uh, integrated into it you have whitelist to uh, uh, whitelist addresses so that we can have a check and you have we can also customize certain policies as per the requirements right like uh, how much amount we can send to any wallet or something so that is all when like i want to ask you one particular thing like what will be a step flow for a customer who is keeping his uh, uh, who is keeping his currencies into liminal if he wants to say let's say switch currencies like eth to bitcoin or eth to a stable currency what will be the step flow so basically what we have done for this right so because we are decentralized completely uh, in a way that uh, uh, we don't control the keys so what we are doing is uh, we are relying on a lot of third party partnerships and integrations okay. uh, directly to liminal that help you do it so for example okay. uh, Uh, in in the specific uh, use case that you're talking about uh, we are tying up and integrating with a lot of these decentralized exchanges which are open source including okay. uniswap uh, sushi swap pancake swap depending on like what chain you want to do it on okay. and you can so it will be a native integration so within the liminal platform itself without giving up the security of multi sig you will still be able to like swap assets uh, using uniswap or any other of these uh, providers right similarly uh, we've got integration with say polygon staking <laughs> native integration right so mm-hmm. say you've got uh, a lot of matic lying in and say you're not going to touch them for whatever four mm-hmm. years five years mm-hmm. you're bullish on matic mm-hmm. so you uh, go ahead and like create a matic wallet uh, mm-hmm. you know store all you bring all your funds out here mm-hmm. and then using multisig directly using liminal uh, using polygon staking just take them so mm-hmm. 
earlier what used to happen was uh, you used to keep a lot of these funds here mm-hmm. uh, at like your multi sig wallet mm-hmm. and then whenever you wanted to you know take advantage of defi opportunities uh, you used to send that back to a single sig wallet like a browser based wallet or whatever mm-hmm. and then use that to connect it to uniswap or whatever and then deploy it compound mm-hmm. or what if you want to lend mm-hmm. borrow mm-hmm. do whatever in defi so now uh, uh, we are bringing so we tied up with metamask institutional uh, we have uh, wallet connect integrated so with wallet connect again with your multi sig go ahead and like there are hundreds of defi apps that wallet connect supports right mm. so you can go ahead and do any of it there okay we're speaking with yield aggregators now so mm. uh, so a lot of these places uh, what new what happens is you you probably say you you stake your assets or whatever uh say you are providing liquidity and uh, um, for that you are doing yield farming right so you are getting those native coins in your wallet mm. what happens is this is a very manual process mm. so you have to every time go you have to harvest uh, get that token into your wallet again mm. stake it and all of that so these yield aggregators like yearn finance bfi finance they mm. auto compound it for you mm. so now we are also talking to a lot of these yield aggregators to sort of have a native integration directly with liminal so that once you have your assets in liminal there are these three layers that we talk about at liminal right so first layer is the store layer hmm. so where your assets will be stored your private keys are very securely managed you sleep very peacefully hmm. second is the transact layer so where hmm. you can you know do send borrow which is like the very core function of a wallet Okay. so you should be able to receive seamlessly send seamlessly and mm-hmm. for sending you rightly touched upon and you've done like a, a, a thorough research around liminal so uh, uh, your white listing your policies <clears throat> and all of that to just make sure mm-hmm. your funds are really going to the right whatever right and third and third is the opportunities layer mm-hmm. so this is where now you have all of the money you are secure whatever whatever now you do multiple things that the defi world has to offer you you mm. could either do lending as simple as that mm. you could you could have your own strategy you could borrow and then lend on some platform mm. you could just lend it uh, stake it to a yield aggregator let them do auto compounding for you you could uh, provide uh, liquidity and become like a market maker mm. and uh, you know on uh, funds for that you could just delegate your funds to some uh, validator and earn staking rewards any of it right so then that's that's the opportunities layer which is also sort of unique to web3 uh, mm-hmm. simply because of how you are structured so these are uh, not um, a lot of uh, benefits that other asset classes can provide you with your long term holdings right uh, so for example you might have like 100 shares of reliance or whatever which you are going to hold for a long term but a lo- uh, there also might be some opportunities for you to like maybe pledge them for margin and and use margin for futures or whatever mm-hmm. but uh, there is no direct way for you to do something with your 100 reliance shares so that they become 101 tomorrow but with bitcoin with ethereum you can do that right you can have your 10 ethereum today and you can actually earn natively so a lot of people look at these uh, you know yield returns and find that very unsatisfactory but that's a very wrong way to look at it right so those yield returns are in your native coins mm. so what people fail to understand is that the potential of that once that coin rises in value your actual yield is going significantly higher because 6% is what you made natively in ether so say mm. if you add 100 ether you actually made 6 ether in a year right mm. but if that 6 ether goes from like say 1300 to like 4000 Mm-hmm. your actual yield is you can't compare that to your web2 yields right so yeah. those are unique things that as a custody provider you need to make sure that when users are coming and creating an account and bringing their money here mm-hmm. it sort of is your responsibility to make sure that you offer them all the possibilities that web3 has to offer so, so are these possibilities already on on liminal or like these are yeah, yeah we are uh, so the examples that i've gave you are already live and integrated with liminal so polygon staking is live wallet connect is live so you can you can swap you can uh, you can basically explore the entire defi world with the security of multisig you have only thing is liminal also right 
Uh, yes, uh, Uniswap. Uniswap. Uni yes. Uniswap. Uni Farm is a very tight integration, actually. So okay. Uniswap, uh, Mohit and Tarusha, and we've been like working very closely together. Mm -hmm. uh, with them, uh, we've actually done a very deep partnership. Okay. So uh, all projects or cohorts on Uniswap mm -hmm. can actually uh, get a lot of various other benefits uh, apart from our standard offering, right? And those include right from price as basic as price discounts uh, to mentorship to those projects. Mm -hmm. So if you are on Unifarm, uh, you can uh, come and so we've got like so Mahin started building like he built his first crypto exchange back in 2011 12. Mm -hmm. So that was probably uh, definitely the first crypto exchange in India. But probably buy sell Bitcoin, right? Buy sell Bitcoin. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct, right? And mm -hmm. that was probably one of the first in the world also, like uh, amongst the first ones in the world because mm -hmm. the industry was pretty new back then. Mm -hmm. Then eventually that stopped, Zeppi started and all of that. So long story short, we've got, and, and similarly we have Dhruvil who is the SVP tech. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he went on to build like the custody infra for uh, Zeppi. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually he went on uh, to build that for Bitflyer in Japan, which is like uh, one of the top 10, 20 exchanges in the world. Okay. So uh, we've got a lot of uh, industry experts uh, mm -hmm. on the custody, wallet, private key side of things. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with Unifarm is that if you're a project on Unifarm, you can get access to say Mahin Dhruvil's time. You can discuss your wallet infrastructure and we can give you that mentorship of, you know, these are three things you could do better or we can help you all of that. Uh, doesn't matter if you want to use Liminal or not. Like... Mm -hmm. This is more, more, more of like, you know, your, uh, uh, you know, project building on our partners, this thing. So mm -hmm. as, as one of the benefits, we want to make sure that we give you the right, uh, guidance, uh, because see for these projects, right. You could do hundred things, right. But one thing wrong on the custody side and your project is doomed. And mm -hmm. we've seen that happen with like multiple projects in the past. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is one area where uh, no one can afford to cut corners. Uh, mm -hmm. it's an ir irreversible mistake if you mm -hmm. if you end up uh, being lax in this you could probably you know uh, have a few features here and there go wrong you can rectify that but say if there is a uh, there is a vulnerability in your architecture and if that gets exploited mm -hmm. and your funds are drained out mm -hmm. then you have to shut down there is no other way there is no other option so so that's what we do you have similar partnership with Polygon and Avalanche also, right? You give uh, you give mentorship to the blockchain as a as a blockchain expert uh, to Polygon and Avalanche developers also, right? So that's correct. Right? So Polygon actually is uh, in the interest of transparency, also one of the investors in Liminal. Okay. So uh, so we it was very obvious that we wanted to, and I think Polygon is like I think earlier mentioned is doing a phenomenal job of. Uh, of developing the entire ecosystem right mm -hmm. so and it's one company that i think as an indian all of us are very very proud of mm -hmm. of yeah. what polygon has gone mm -hmm. on to achieve mm -hmm. so uh, naturally a lot of uh, indian projects uh, end up deploying on polygon mm -hmm. so it was very uh, obvious for us to sort of have a partnership with them because that's one common market that you know we are also catering to mm -hmm. and and uh, and that's how we actually that was the first partnership project that we actually ever launched at liminal and that went on to become a huge success and and that's when we realized that this is a model that really works well mm -hmm. and uh, that's how we started replicating that with avalanche mm -hmm. uh, in times to come you will be seeing similar partnerships with other protocols as well Mm -hmm. We recently went live with Solana. So we're completely integrated with them as well. Okay. Uh, so hopefully we'll have something soon coming for these other protocols also, oh, because okay. that works very, very well. So, yeah. and then Solana also has a big following in India. So, yeah. yeah so, so, uh, and then it's a win-win, right? So these projects get access to, uh, the industries like most leading, uh, thought leaders around custody, mm -hmm. uh, and and we are not pushy when it comes mm -hmm. to like sales, right? Uh, so see, of course, we are in a business, so we definitely want to eventually hope that they start using liminal. Mm -hmm. But th the other agenda is also that even if you don't use us, we want to make sure that you are as safe and you are as securely building your project as possible mm -hmm. uh, to avoid 
to avoid any hacks because that eventually hurts the entire industry mm-hmm. so uh, one hack and then all of your web2 folks will start going like you know crypto is all about scams and hacks and 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 that's the narrative we've been all of us have been fighting for quite some time now so it that's is, another reason why we this year has been very bad into this no so many hacks solana yeah. uh, slope and yeah. things voyager celsius so, so see that's what happened Hmm. that's what happened right see with slope also uh, uh, there was a vulnerability in those wallets but uh, what gets uh, shamed in the public is the blockchain so people hmm. confuse that as the solana being hacked yeah. versus a wallet provider who stored your private keys in a text format let people have access to it and drain your wallets yeah so so that's that's the problem because people don't really understand that blockchain getting hacked is bullshit right like what do yeah. you mean by that yeah, yeah so but yeah i mean there have been concerning incidents like what happened with maybe say uh the bnb chain where they had to like stop it or maybe solana where they had to stop it those hmm. are moments when you realize they're probably not as decentralized as you think hmm. but then if you see bnb also uh, they are also progressively becoming more and more decentralized yeah. so they're adding validators to this so like i said right everyone you have to have trade offs in life so <laughs> it, you have to decide what you're going after mm. and and if if adoption is you know what you're going after and if you think uh centralization is going to help you with it mm. so be it i mean yeah. you know uh, uh, there is probably nothing right or wrong uh, eventually you will have to move towards uh, you know perfecting yourself in all three aspects mm. uh, of of blockchain but uh, yeah like i don't i don't see it as right or wrong yeah. i just see it as a business decision that you've taken off how you think you can grow your own project yeah. and and uh, after and a lot of like ethereum has already set a benchmark of decentralization and it is working towards scalability if other people also just start copying then it's difficult to enter the market right they have to start from scalability and work toward decentralization to have some market share into the going forward. absolutely absolutely like and and if you see a lot of what <clears throat> flow says right like mm-hmm. i am not trying to go after the existing crypto market at all i am just yeah. trying to go after the bigger web 2 pi and how i can bring them on uh, onto web 3 yeah. so so that's a stand that they have taken and i mean n- n- there's nothing right or wrong about it of mm-hmm. course uh, there are crypto ogs who are not going to like it who, mm-hmm. who are going to be like and of course there are bitcoin maxis who are going to find all of this bullshit mm-hmm. so i mean everyone's entitled to their opinion and and so be it right but yeah. it, but i know industry what... here aiming for that 1 billion user mark right we want to someday get a 1 billion user mark and everybody will have their own way of reaching there absolutely like i said right see without adoption this is never going to come out of speculation it is only going to be restricted to that because and you do, you can't blame users till you do not like so maybe minting nfts on instagram using polygon now is a good use case towards adoption yeah uh, now i have a legitimate reason to probably buy an nft so maybe even with twitter allowing you to verify your nfts mm. is a good way to increase adoption because now uh, the the original argument was i can take a screenshot and put it how do you prove ownership of this right so so that's happening Hmm. Uh, and i think with even uh, elon musk taking over twitter is probably good for crypto as an industry yeah, yeah. Uh, because i am sure he will end up doing some uh, really good integrations and build up for use cases for crypto hmm. especially the fact that a lot of his investors who back the deal come from crypto industry including cz Binance, from binance, 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 binance. binance. right so hmm. so i think things are and and, and we have the A brightest of people working on this, right? Like Jack is full time working on on uh, scaling Bitcoin or mm-hmm. or building Bitcoin applications, right? So when you have uh, an open source protocol and when you have the best minds in the industry on it, you can expect uh, some crazy things to happen. So uh, mm-hmm. so at least with NFTs, what we are seeing is they have become one very good way of getting web to people into web3 because mm-hmm. that's a very easy use case for us to understand and explain mm-hmm. uh, people right like you buy a collectible so everyone's mm-hmm. very well versed with that idea yeah and and one problem 
that is happening right now with blockchain is that see it's built by engineers right so they are very passionate about tech mm-hmm. but you and me are talking right now mm-hmm. uh, over an internet protocol that probably neither of us understand how internet works right mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter as long as i know how to use the application built on internet to for mm-hmm. me to talk to you yeah so that is what we need to move in blockchain towards as well mm-hmm. we need to come out of the fact and you know explain everyone how private key generates and how doesn't matter as long as you know this is a trezor this is how you set it up this is how you sign this is how you back it up and this is what you can do with it right mm-hmm. everyone does not need to understand what is a private key how mm-hmm. are private and that as an industry is where again i think we went wrong like everyone started focusing too much on explaining uh, the the basics of uh, you know uh, digital uh, distributed ledger technology and mm-hmm. this is how blockchain works this is how private key works mm-hmm. doesn't matter you know that is very is how- but exactly i think that's what happened because like the early adopters are always the tech geeks right so they exactly they are in love for the technology but like the mass exactly. will come for the adoption purposes and the usability of it yeah exactly like if someone if someone were to explain to me probably internet is maybe more complex than blockchain but we've never even thought of trying to understand like how how an you know tcp ip protocol works how are data packets moving from here to there who cares <laughs> right yeah. so that, that that's the that's that's the problem that i think uh, has happened because you can't rely on tech folks to really bring in adoption because that has to come from uh, you know business people who understand product who understand use cases and you can't expect everyone to do every role so which is why you cannot restrict this industry only for like uh, you know techies who've done this everyone has a role to play marketers have a very big role of uh, of making sure that they explain this in a way and and push this towards the larger audience so that it's palatable to them please mm. understand you can't like throw around like jargon and scare your web2 users mm. and and try and act very smart about it right like there is nothing you achieve out of it as long as you're really you going to you potential to that <laughs> exactly exactly so so yeah so it's interesting because no one of us has ever experienced uh a new industry being born a new asset class coming in like when was a new when was the last new asset class that came in right like m- maybe equities have been around like whatever for a century mm-hmm. we are all new to this in a way so everyone's mm-hmm. like still figuring it out uh when probably like in 90s or early 2000s no one would have guessed the use cases of internet right like mm-hmm. no one literally would have thought e-commerce can probably happen in mm-hmm. 90s right when probably internet came i think it's a cliche of of comparing the early 90s in internet to like blockchain but i think it makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. so forget internet right like say we we were doing this interview say maybe uh, back in 2016 mm-hmm. i would have never guessed about nfts exploding and becoming like the way how web to people come in mm-hmm. every year we've had a new theme mm-hmm. we've had if i as a theme in one year mm-hmm. we had nft as a theme in one year and and there is nothing to say that there can't be a new theme that will come up maybe in 2023 that of we are course. talking about mm. like you are already saying right gaming gaming is probably going to be the next theme and the next bull market might be run by gaming side of the web3 absolutely in, in this bad piece also you guys have secured seed funding this year so how challenging yes. it was and like what uh, so, are future plans so i'll tell you what what happened right so uh, it was april of last year is when we you know sort of like so feb of last year is when uh, i sort of uh, joined in mine was working on it since quite some time along with like dhruvil and ankit on the tech security side of things right so uh, i think we started like i started working from like jan feb april is when we formally incorporated the company uh and uh, we were fortunate enough to be revenue generating from like sort of day one right so uh, zeppe went ahead and did a p- pilot with us so uh, so we built that for them uh we did that till like october uh, to sort of see that you know things that we are thinking are they even practical and you know are we reaching like product market fit hmm. uh so uh, we built it uh, a lot of things uh, that we thought will add value actually added value they really liked what we were doing hmm. uh there were uh, feedback 
that we got we incorporated that into the product mm-hmm. and you know uh, sort of uh, october uh, is when we we reached a decent level with the product right and we were still with zeppe at that time october uh, we decided to attend the uh, dubai uh, crypto festival okay uh, yeah, we were not mm-hmm. we were not participating in it our idea was just to go there and like just be out there and meet people and let them know that you know liminal is something that we are now focusing on right uh, so we were fortunate enough to meet a, a, a lot of exchanges and pro- projects and you know we explained what we were doing and we ended up signing 3 4 uh, contracts in like november after we came back so that is when we realized that now we are onto something and slowly we reached like 300 400000 arr and we were a team of 5 6 people right everyone is doing sales everyone is doing marketing mm-hmm. uh, i'm i'm the hr also i'm the accountant also mm-hmm. and that's when we realized that you know now we need to like sort of start building this into a company uh so that was one uh, so for us uh, honestly uh, the motivation to actually go for a seed round was very different right uh, uh, there were two main reasons one is that custody is a very fundamentally uh, a business where you uh, you need to have a lot of trust so think about it you are an exchange you have maybe 200 300 million dollar worth of assets that your retail users have kept with you mm-hmm. and you are maybe regulated by someone or whatever and you know that if you screw up with this there are maybe 1 million users who will be suffering right mm-hmm. so you will be very very skeptical about choosing your custody provider because mm-hmm. uh, there is a lot at stake mm-hmm. and and which is why trust is a big big factor in this industry mm-hmm. and bitgo and fireblocks have been doing a very very uh, good job uh, over over a period of time and mm-hmm. trust is also a factor of time right like the more time you spend in the industry mm-hmm. the more known you are and the more trust you develop and we didn't of course have that uh, luxury because we were like maybe 6 6 months old back then mm-hmm. and so uh, one thing we wanted to achieve out of this was like get uh, the best people in the industry backing us uh to help us with uh, you know so that when we go to exchanges when we talk to them uh, there is some more amount of trust that okay if polygon uh, mm. you know better capital or whatever have invested woodstock capital and all of those guys mm. are backing you then you know that was one part and second was of course uh, we wanted to tap in their network so uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, you know we are able to like uh, quickly get more introductions uh, not only with customers but uh, you know hire the best engineering talent hmm. or get access to the best pr agency or get you know so explore their network and and use it for our benefit hmm. to quickly grow so those were honestly two main reasons uh, uh, and of course <coughs> the funds that come in definitely help us with the growth right so uh, so that is how that was the motivation so we Uh, i still remember we wrote down on a you know uh, document that this is how we want our cap table to be structured where we wanted one protocol to back us we wanted a couple of exchanges mm-hmm. to be investors because you know they are our biggest customer segment mm-hmm. so if they sort of back you uh, that sort of really says a lot mm-hmm. so we wanted that we wanted a few crypto focused vcs we wanted a couple of uh, you know web2 vcs we wanted a few angel investors in crypto so we designed all of that we were very fortunate uh, enough to actually get the exact cap table that we wanted so we got we got uh, balaji shrinivasan uh, andreas antonopoulos uh, ajit khurana all of them like sort of on the angel side backing us uh, we ended up getting polygon as the protocol that we wanted uh, we got coin dcx gold as as the exchanges that we wanted uh, and uh we got uh, nexus venture elevation capital you know all of them like whatever so i think we were very very happy with our uh, cap table and fortunate enough that you know they backed us uh, mm-hmm. of course one important or big reason was that uh, uh they'd seen the work that happened at zeppe and how we built that company also mahin is very very well reputed in the industry uh, so there's a lot of trust people have in 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 his uh, ability to execute so all of those factors really helped us 
but that's how we went about like our seed round uh eventually like i think uh, uh we closed that in like april may of this year okay uh, so we raised like around uh, 5 million dollars mm. uh then around i think yeah around that and then uh, we we started like from january we started focusing on uh, you know converting this into a uh, you know building all bringing all of the lego pieces together mm. so the first thing was that we wanted to uh, really hire department heads for like marketing sales people mm. uh, product and all of that so uh, we were uh, i think five six people uh, before that and now i think we are around like 40 people or something uh, and still uh, at least hiring on the engineering side aggressively so uh, that's i think been the been the journey and, and now we have a, a, a proper sales team uh, who's like uh, you know help helping us uh, uh, reach reach out mm. to a larger audience and mm. and do it in a more professional manner it used to be me and mine really doing all of the sales back then and uh, we are of course very bad sales people so uh, we knew that uh, you know with these people coming in now so this is now sort of like shaped up into like a proper proper company and and of course we have aggressive targets that we've kept for ourselves and we are hoping we will we'll, uh, sort of end up achieving them but uh, yeah i mean uh it's been it's been very quick uh, uh it's already been like one and a half year now so we're mm. doing a lot of cool stuff on the engineering and the product side of things mm. uh good thing is that it's complicated so uh if you're able to solve it you can actually convert this into like a monopoly business mm. if you get it right mm. and our focus <clears throat> has been apac mina uh predominantly mm. this is a market that we Uh, understand very well this is a market where we already have an existing reputation because of uh, zeppe and mm. and because of our existing investors and customers mm. and this is a market where uh, we believe uh, uh, the, the bitgo and fireblocks have not been able to like crack it so far so mm. so uh, for those reasons we've like decided to like you know go all aggressive here but uh, i think in all honesty there's a lot of good work that even the everyone in the industry including competitors are doing uh, really well i would say so mm. i think at some level uh, we are all trying to ensure uh, even though we compete but we are all trying to ensure that the industry is secure so that a lot of uh, adoption and use cases can come in mm. but uh, yeah so that's 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 our focus right now and that's that's what we've been building on so But going forward, your focus will be on B two B, right? Like not so much on B two C, not attracting or or that is also focus, like attracting the H and I customers to. So H H and I and family offices is something that uh, we uh, sort of treat that as a as a cross sell. So okay. for example, we get a lot of B two B, you know, customers. For example, your. a ceo of an exchange right yeah. in all practical purposes because you are a ceo of an exchange you probably have a lot of wealth in crypto personal wealth right mm. because you industry right uh, you use zepay or uh, sorry you use uh, liminal's product and you realize that it's working really fine for your exchange mm. you get that confidence we sort of use that to cross sell uh, liminal's family uh, office offering or hni offering to you so mm. uh, so it's easier because Uh, you understand the merit of the product mm-hmm. and so you become like a individual customer so we don't aggressively target b2c per se mm-hmm. at least that's the that's the strategy that we've taken so far mm-hmm. but uh, uh yeah like one thing i've realized is like never say never so you don't know like two years down the line uh so once the bull run hits like then there would be a lot of rush of uh, regular investor private investors who would like to secure their funds See, actually, if if the bull market really hits, right, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, that gives a huge impetus to our B two B business also because uh, mm-hmm. our exchanges will experience like crazy volumes. Yeah. So the need for a stable infrastructure will go up like ten x from from yes. what it is. Right? So 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 that also sort of helps us. But you're right. so mm. uh, there will be a lot of like uh, you know individuals and we've already seen a lot of 
uh, work is happening on the you know awareness on self custody side so there are a lot of good people who have been coming up with videos and articles and explaining the importance of controlling your own keys and so we are trying to make it so we used to uh, uh, say that our mission is to simplify self custody so so our idea is to make it less uh, uh, what's the word like uh, intimidating so less intimidating and and you know you uh when we talk to people they think that you know it's going to be some rocket science and uh you know self this is uh, you know keeping it on exchange is safer but when we give them a demo of the platform and we actually do like concierge onboarding so we help them set up the keys mm. uh, we help them uh, ensure that they're backing it up correctly we help them uh, create their first wallet together we do a first test transaction together we are available like literally 24/7 if they have any issues so so that is the comfort that uh, we need to give because of the lack of awareness around this and a lot of misconceptions around uh, you know managing your own keys they people feel that you need to be like crypto experts to be able to do it and all of mm-hmm. that so we we're, we're trying our bit to simplify that so once people use liminal and 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 do a few transactions they realize it is like probably easier than uh even you know logging into their bank account and making like a transaction it's in a lot of ways similar right so we've tried replicating that experience so you you know whenever you initiate mm-hmm. a transaction terminal there is a sms that goes on to your other wallet members which sort of replicates your banking experience and and so we've we've done a lot of cool things around that to to hide the complexity of of multi sig and blockchain and all of that Even so yeah so the support is very appreciated in the industry the limited yes. support is very much appreciated so uh, oh i'm glad so your uh, like uh, your auto refill is roughly around 11% of the total volumes right right now you think this is going to explode right this this will not stay at 11% so like i said right see uh, those auto refills are also a function of uh, user uh, movement user so movement. Uh, as in when you know there is volatility in the market coming back in a lot of people will want to do arbitrage mm. and at least the traders right so mm. they would want to keep moving <clears throat> funds instead out of say one exchange to another mm. uh, sell it there bring it here and all of those good things that arbitragers do so the moment you see a lot of peak in user activity uh there is a lot of movement in user withdrawals by default mm-hmm. and the moment there is more user withdrawals there is more movement in auto refills because that is where that hot kicks wallets, in hot wallets come in yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it's all a function of like i would say uh, volatility and then that leading to user action leading to like auto refills mm-hmm. but yeah uh, at least uh, with exchanges that we've deployed this the feedback that we've got is that we we've, we've been able to sort of Uh, eliminate ninety percent of manual efforts. So, okay. and as an as a organization, we are trying to aim for two type of efficiencies, right? Either time or cost. So, I should be able to either reduce time for you, or I should be able to uh, reduce cost for you. So, uh, so no, for example, manual efforts are saved, right? I read somewhere in your uh, uh, some article like uh, you save like roughly one ninety to two hundred hours for like four hundred million dollar refills. exactly exactly so so earlier the whole process was very very manual right like you yeah. exchanges end up having a complete separate team which is just responsible for uh, monitoring hot wallet refills right so mm-hmm. from that to sort of now completely automated uh, without any manual intervention so mm-hmm. uh, so you end up saving definitely a lot of time and you can repurpose that team to do something else which mm. is much more productive so so, productive. so that and, and, and evm fee saver is another you know product that we have uh, which sort of ensures that you end up saving 9 to 10% in network fees across evm chains so mm. so that's a proprietary tech that we've developed and mm. we tested it again with a couple of exchanges and then we rolled it out across so mm. so that is that gives you i mean that is how we are thinking when we are building products or we are bringing in new features right like mm. how can i increase efficiencies for you or how can i make it more seamless for you or how can i make it more secure for you hmm. yeah man that was like very very nice to hear like uh, we were already uh, got, we got already familiar with liminal uh, around january or february 
and we were reading about it but talking to you and like really seeing how how we are going uh, increasing our partnership like with different different platforms and everything i really think like this is going to explode and i i really wish like it it does also come to b2c customers because as we have been dealing with a lot of investors i would like their funds to be secured too because i understand like nobody goes beyond treasure okay like at at max that people will have a hardware wallet and really wish that if you are a long term investor and you have a long term vision into cryptocurrency you must learn how to secure things then you have then you have a choice like how much you want to keep it there how much you want to keep it on an exchange and you can use uh, everything but you should learn this learn this and you should know how to keep the things secured absolutely couldn't agree more with you yeah. it was lovely lovely yeah. talking to you roman and we might we might get in touch again absolutely i had a very very good time i would have been reading some uh, you know random thing around crypto right now so this was time well spent so i really enjoyed having a conversation with you guys and and i mean uh, i've also been following the kind of stuff educational stuff that you guys have been putting on the crypto side of thing on your website so i think uh, uh, need to thank you guys also for doing your bit to to sort of uh, educate the industry and educate the users so continue the good work Thank, thank you so you, much. Happy to be involved in any way possible in this industry.